Tonight's guest is Keith. Keith, welcome to the show. Hey, how are you? Well, I'm doing good, but more importantly, how are you? Oh, hanging in there, living a dream. Somebody's, maybe <laughs> mine, maybe someone else's, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully it's your dream and not someone else's. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how it should be, at least. Keith, please give us a brief bio on yourself. Well, obviously, my name is Keith, and uh, 48 years of age. I've lived in Oakland County, Michigan my whole life, western side of it. And um, that's pretty much what I can share at the moment. Keith, something happened when you were seven that just might have been dogman related. Please expand on that for us. Actually, uh, the seven, eight years old, uh, so you're talking 82, 83, roughly, I made a mistake. And that mistake was watching the movie The Howling. And um, PSA for everybody, don't let your children watch that. It's uh, pretty aggressive of a, a movie. I'm sure a lot of you have seen it. And then um, after that, a very short time after that, my parents and I went camping in the woods, isolated area, and uh, things got a little interesting at that point. Yeah, um, what happened, we had gone up to this place called Mud Lake here in Michigan. It's uh, Clare County, roughly the center of the state. I believe it's a state park. And it was, uh, like I said, it was very isolated. I think it's an outhouse, uh, fire ring. And a picnic table is all you got. Everything was all hunky dory, but I still had that little bit of that howling, especially the transformation scenes was stuck in my head and all the noise those guys made. Everything was going good at camping. We did the typical family stuff, just kind of chilled out. And then the nighttime came. And this is where, for me as being a kid, it it, it scared the heck out of me. What, what had happened was as it was getting dark, Evidently, they had coyotes up there, and I didn't know what a coyote was or anything like that. All I knew was kind of wolves or whatever the case is. But across this lake, there was a pack of coyotes. And they started yapping up and hollering and everything else that they did. And, of course, I was getting a little scared, and it was around that time to get to bed. And all of a sudden, those howls, again, remember being a kid, watching the howling, I didn't know what was coming across that lake but as nighttime grew those howls got closer and they kept getting closer and i don't know what amount of time it was later but now they are in our camp now you heard all this ruckus outside you heard the howling outside you heard i don't know if they were fighting back and forth here and there so it was scaring me pretty good and uh what ended up happening was that the coyotes actually took our cooler and drug it across the camping site. So you can imagine watching that type of movie and then hearing that stuff in real life coming at you. You didn't know what it was. I didn't know what it was. Yeah, especially at that age. Oh, man, it, you, you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. <laughs> That's the only way I could put it with that. I didn't know. No, of course not. That's a good way to put it and sum it up. You told us about the howling before you had that first experience with the coyotes at night. Did you like watching scary movies like that? Yeah, I was kind of into the scary movies and stuff like that. You know, I I dug Jaws and I think around around the same time, I think it was like 82, 83, the thing with Kurt Russell come out. And of course, I've seen... Texas Chainsaw Massacres at the drive-in and stuff like that, where they play the older movies. So, yeah, I kind of had a thing for them. But until probably my teenage years, I stayed out of the woods for the most part because of that movie. That had a big effect on you then. Yep, that it did. I mean, I'd, and I've never had any other movie do that to me. Nothing. It was just that one. And with the... uh transformation scenes in those movies that's what did it for me i mean it was yeah it was creepy and all the bubbling skin and all that weird stuff i guess yeah they really did do a great job with the transformation scene so 
I can understand why it got to you like that. Did your love of watching horror movies like that change after you started to have dogman encounters? No, I, I maintained the horror movies, man. I was digging it with the uh, Jason Voorhees, you know, Friday the 13th, Halloween type stuff. Uh, I remember, you know, of course, the Nightmare on Elm Street when Freddy Krueger was the new it guy or whatever you want to say. My buddy Valentine's, for some of the older folks out there, my age, a little bit older, who remembers Humanoids from the Deep. Gotta love it. Huh, you've got me wondering now. I've got quite a few years on you, and I don't remember that movie. It's a fun movie. Yeah, check it out. It's kind of like a, I wouldn't say it was a B-rated movie, but it was, it was all right for what it was. I think that's a uh, late 70s era movie so i was probably just a puppy myself when that came out huh i cut my teeth on movies like that and somehow i missed that one i'll have to see if i can dig it up somehow most eyewitnesses only have one dog man encounter keith but some people like you have multiple encounters with them you think there's a reason why you've had so many encounters please talk us through that well the encounters that i've had i don't know it's I think it has something to do with my native heritage. My heritage, my background is, for the most part, it's French, Potawatomi Indian, and Cherokee. I don't know if that's Cherokee or Cherokee Nation. Uh, Like we had discussed, it had something to do with pre- or post-Trail of Tears. But uh, being of the pretty good amount of the Native American, I think with these dogmen that are out here or critters as i like to call them i believe they've been around a long time and i think they can actually pick up uh, maybe on a spiritual sense i mean that's just the way that i look at it is that i've had friends that's dealt with these guys and they got thumped i mean they it didn't kill them but it put a little bit of a whooping on them and um just enough to get them out of the woods. But for me, every time I've gone out there, knock on wood, (laughs) it's always been a respectful thing on both sides. So I I really believe that it's, um, it has something to do with native bloodline. I think there's something in spirit that emanates that towards these things. And with my native background, my ancestors, they live just a couple miles from where I grew up. So the family, even until this day, from I'd say the early 1920s until now, they're still in the same area. And in some cases, they're still in the old farmhouses that they had back before my great grandparents. So that's given them a lot of time to develop a relationship. If I guess you could call it a relationship with any dogman or Sasquatch around the property then. If you'd like to be able to listen to the show without ads and have full access to bonus content, that's an option. To find out how, please go to dogmanencounters.com forward slash podcast. All right, Keith, having said that, please tell us about your encounters now. Give us every last detail that comes to mind. All righty. You already know about the howling issue, and that's where I wouldn't say it was a fascination or an obsession, but curiosity would be a good word for this that's where this started so early 80s a situation where it started hitting a little closer to home with dogmen or critters as i call them Um, this actually started this was about summer vacation of my junior year so i believe that would be uh 91 what had happened uh, my buddy and i we went over to my dad's house and he at the time was a firefighter rescue for a local department around here and we just talked to him and he asked him if he's had any runs or anything like this you know see how it was going and on this particular weekend on one of these runs that he went on he was a little dis- i don't know if it was disturbed or scared by it um What had happened was it was a late night call 
And what it was, it was a medical backup for a police investigation. And they had gotten to this this location, this home, this farmhouse, which uh, it was on the outskirts of a local metro park around here. And when they got there, there were police, quite a bit of them. And a handful of those guys, they were dressed up with a little more firepower. Yeah, um, how to put it. If anything was going to mess with them, they had 5.56 reasons to be left alone. If You know, if you catch my drift. And the odd thing was, is that both the police chief and the fire chief was there. This is odd. I don't, this isn't usually normally how things go. And there were also a couple people there that were <sighs> suited up. We'll say uh, they looked nice, well kept. Uh, they were not of anything that had to do with the fire or police department, and they were talking to both of the chiefs. And those people had left. And what my dad said at that time is, after those people had left, both of the chiefs got everybody together, and they said, "We're looking. You're going to be looking for something." And whatever you see, it would be in your best interest to not see it. So take that for what you will. To me, that's it's almost like a, a veiled threat. And my dad and one of his partners, they went out on this little search or whatever with other, you know, they broke off into little groups or whatever. And behind, I guess it'd be like a barn or large pole barn or whatever they had noticed something was watching them they didn't hear anything they didn't smell anything there wasn't anything growling or anything like that but they had caught red eyes and what my dad had said it was about as tall as they were and they would see it blink once in a while and kind of move just so slightly but they kind of flashed their lights on it and everything you know this stuff was in the bushes and at some point, they had made mention to the uh, police groups that was there. And hardware drawn, they started advancing into this area where this set of eyes were at. They got probably within about 20, 30 yards of this thing. And my daddy just said that whatever it was, it turned and took off. And now... When it took off, it was taken off in a northern a northern direction, uh, which would lead you right into a metro park, which gets fairly swampy. That's where that started with the family. As far as I know, no one else at that time had any other types of contacts. Now, when I started getting into this, where I started having my own encounters, was a little bit later on. It was, uh, I think it was 92, summer vacation of 92. So my buddies and I, what we used to do in high school, we'd just run around at night, dress up in camouflage. We used to call it night missions. It was, you know, didn't cause any crazy trouble or anything like that. We didn't go out and damage anything or vandalize nothing. But one night, one of my buddies and I, we were out and it was just down the street from where I live. And it's, it's back country roads. I mean, you know, I got a farm, a farm across the street and everything. And we're going down this side street and I heard something. I heard something in the bushes, tall bushes, kind of thick. And I had a little military flashlight. Uh, probably everybody knows military surplus flashlight, green in color, 90 degree bend with the flashlight on the bent end and it used to come with a couple lenses it was a blue and green lens and one of the things that i used to like to do is put them both together because it kind of made almost like a uv light didn't put out a lot of power or anything like that so anything outside a couple feet didn't do anything but anyway my buddy and i we hear something and it was just a very slight movement I'm like what is this so i went over to investigate now behind this thick it was probably only 30, 40 feet thick, and then it went into someone else's yard. So they had lights behind it. I had caught something. And what I had seen, 
it was a silhouette. Uh, it was a fairly large silhouette. It was basically just a head is all I saw. Had the tall pointy ears directly on top of the head. I was you know, like, man, that's not bushes. This is something different. And I didn't know if it was like a part of a log or whatever the case was. And me being me, I just went at it. And I left hand, I brushed the brush out of the way and I had this light. And again, like I said, it wasn't very powerful. It didn't light up anything. But what it did, it kind of illuminated more of the uh, silhouette of this thing. Couldn't tell you a color. Didn't know. But when I did this and I kind of stuck my head in there, whatever it was opened its eyes. And its eyes, they were that dark ruby red color. Now, I don't know if the uh, that, that black light type thing kind of amplified it but this thing was very close i couldn't have punched it it was too close maybe an elbow shot but we were literally face to face yeah i was we were done at that point we ran we just ran home and you talk about an eight, eighth of a mile sprint down this road not too far but that was it didn't get attacked didn't get followed none of that which was fine no big deal and that was it for a little while. I, we didn't have anything too crazy go on there until I think it was, man, I'm going to mess up this the time here. I think it was, I don't remember if it was winter. Let's see, that, Yeah, okay, so it would have been winter of 92. I'm trying to think, senior year of high school. Um, still in the same place where I'm at my house. Got a couple more buddies over. Winter time. And, you know, we're, we're big guns. A couple of my buddies, they were going to be going off to the military and everything like that. So, you know, we're bragging about the guns that we have and, you know, just checking them out. Nothing crazy, not shooting them out the back or nothing. And it's like, okay, well, dog's got to go outside. I had a hound dog, a little beagle. And I let her out the back. And the yard that I have is about an acre size acre size lot or so and then behind me the neighbor behind me had 25 acres that he would use as a basically a golf course so it gives you an idea there wasn't much behind there uh, as far as major amounts of trees or forest or high grass or anything so anyway i let the dog out i bent over hooked the dog to the chain my hound dog started going crazy hair on her back stood up and she was barking in a violent manner. And anybody that knows beagles, they're friendly. They don't muck around with nobody. And um, it kind of startled me. I kind of paused. And when I looked up, this is the first time I saw something in its glory, <laughs> if you will. What I saw, and this was probably, oh, if I had to say it was probably about 60 feet away we had a, a large pile of wood that we used for heating it was by that and we had a burning barrel uh like a 55 gallon drum but it was on top of cinder blocks to give you an idea of the height so take a cinder block lay it on its side 55 gallon drum i think is like 36 38 inches or something like that i don't remember i worked work with them for years i don't remember but this thing was standing there, this dog-like creature, if you will. Now, the base of its neck and its shoulders was just as high as that drum was. That gives you an idea of how tall this thing was. So you're talking over 40 inches. And its color was a gray. Yeah, like a gun smoke gray. It's kind of light. and But it was short short hair uh picture like a pit bull or a bulldog or a little boston terrier or whatever the case is it was short hair and this thing was standing there and i could see it side to side and um or front to back i should say and it was very tall huge feet arms didn't look right as far as what a normal dog would be that's the the weird thing about it they were kind of almost like bowed out. Again, we're going to use like a pit bull. You, know, you get a little stocky pit bull and how their front legs kind of bow out. It was like that. And its eyes. Its eyes were 
the brightest white I could ever imagine. Um, to give a comparison, it would be staring at an arc welder. If anybody's ever done that by mistake, cough, cough, I have. It was bright like that. And I, it startled me. I didn't know what it was. It was my uh, neighbor down the street had a Great Dane. This had easily a foot on that Great Dane. It was huge. And that Great Dane he had was not that color. I yelled. I was terrified at that point. I, I stepped back and said some choice words that any teenager would with his buddies around. And they looked out the sliding door and they saw it as well. They grabbed the firepower. They went out. One of them had a, yeah, another 5.56 five, chambered firearm and then a, a 12 gauge. They went to engage this thing. And this thing kind of just looked at them like, really? Is this how we're going to do this? And this thing proceeded at this point to walk behind this large pile of wood that we had in a, a pole barn. Now, it disappeared when they went out there. They turned on the lights to the cars because that's kind of what we had. We didn't really have major flashlights or anything. And then there was, of course, the uh, light on top of the pole barn. But it didn't do justice for anything behind it. And I'm watching this. I didn't see anything, didn't see anything. And now I'm on the back porch on the second level. I got a 30 out 6 Yeah, I packed some firepower. I'm looking. I don't see anything through a scope. And on the corner of my eye to my left, this would be facing northbound i caught this thing standing on a side street same one that i had mentioned here just previously with the red eyes it was standing there and like it was waiting for me i whipped that 30 out six around i i looked at it and like no it started moving and, and it did it walked it walked away it didn't run or anything like that but it was heading towards the main road that was in front of the house so i followed it went to the front of the house and picked back up on it with the rifle. Now it's at this corner of the side street and the main road. And I, again, I, I put them crosshairs right between its eyes. And I think our yards at that point, just to give you a distance is, I think our lots were like 160 feet in width. I think that's what they were. I'm, I'm not too sure. So you're talking just over 55 yards, half a football field, roughly. And I was looking at this thing in its eyes, and the eyes were still glowing bright. There wasn't much light around it, but they were still, God, I'm going to hate saying this. I was thinking about this earlier. They almost sparkled. And I'm not doing the whole Twilight movie thing where the vampires sparkle, but they almost sparkled. It was kind of cool. But at the time I'm looking at this thing, I, I, I pulled my head away from the scope. And I looked at this thing. I'm like, what are you? And I just, I, why shoot it at that point? There is actually a, a brief hint of reason in my head. And this thing's still staring at me. It nodded. You know, it, it nodded as like acknowledging, you know, almost like, thank you for not putting a 30 caliber round through my forehead. And it just turned towards the main road and from a standing leap cleared two lanes of road. It landed on the opposite side of the road. Now, on there, on the opposite side of the road, it was uh, a little bit wooded, pine trees, but I had a fence with a little bit of barbed wire on top of it. So you're talking, what, six, eight-foot fence, whatever. Second jump over the fence, disappeared. That was it. Again, this thing never made noise, even when it was on the snow. It did nothing. It just, it was just there. How I see it is it kind of thanked me for not shooting it, which, you know, you're welcome. And that was it for a while. I didn't get up close and personal with anything else until I believe it was, I'm going to say it was, I think it was winter of 93, nine, yeah, winter of 93, 94, I believe what this, I think I was like 18 at the time. And my buddy and I, which for this road that we were on is I would say the majority of where I and we have seen multiple dogmen. 
which I'll get into different ones here in a little bit as to what I've seen. But we decided one day, this is, I think it's January of 94, mid January of 94. And for some reason, I don't know why I remember the time 438 PM. I don't know why I just do after all these years, I remember it, but we're sledding. Now this hill backed up against state parkland. And my buddy has always told me different things about, oh, I've seen this, I've seen in stuff in there. And like I'd mentioned earlier, one of my buddies got thumped by one. Yeah, that was him. But um, we're sledding and we're doing our thing or whatever. And a couple other kids come up and they were sledding. They stayed for a little while and we're sitting at the top of the hill. And on my left, which would be heading west we heard something crunch through the snow and what it was, if it was the sound, if I had to compare it to anything, it'd be like something pouncing and landing. So I guess a good way to be it is like, if you ever see a winter thing where a fox is jumping on a mouse, it was like that, but it was significantly heavier. And, um, we heard it and we kind of looked and now it's back in there. It's, it's all pine forest, uh, for the most part in that area of the park it is uh the pine trees are the kind that you know the the branches don't really start until they're kind of above your head and i believe at some point it was a mill area for lumber or something because the the trees it looked like they're in rows but anyway we heard this thing and it it was a little bit of a distance off i'm gonna say probably 50 feet we'll say 50 feet or so didn't hear anything we continued talking and everything and watching the kids at the end of the run down at the bottom of the hill we heard it again then we kind of looked again we're like dude what is this and we're not seeing anything but this time it was considerably closer and we get kind of a little bit nervous like we're just not seeing anything we're not seeing nothing and then just a couple minutes later, again, just boom, down onto the ground, breaking through the snow and everything. And at that point, my body just froze. I'm like, uh-oh, something's not right here. Now, my buddy that was with me, he was sitting to my right. So I would be between him and whatever just landed. He leaned past me. And he looked and his eyes got huge. They welled up. They started, he almost started crying. He turned pale. And then he decided he didn't want to be there anymore. And my buddy at the time, he was a pretty big boy. He was probably 250 pounds and about 5'7 or so. So, you know, I'm not knocking him, but it is what it is, just to give you an idea of what he did. At that point, he took off down the hill. He had a jump on the hill, grabbed his sled and was running by the time and just left me there. He took off towards uh, the main part of the side road that we're talking about. And I'm like, oh, man, I'm going to have to face this thing. And I turned my head kind of easy, not fast, not real stupid slow. But I'm looking at this thing to my left and it's within probably 12 feet, 10 to 12 feet, maybe. and what i can see through the brush was it this was kind of it was brown but had kind of like gray undertones uh picture like a white-tailed deer this time of year where they kind of changed their color it was like that it was probably the same length as a deer would be it's not crazy long but it's not crazy short either but it had a mane it had a mane on its on its head and it, it stretched onto its shoulders a little bit and then kind of beat off a little bit about halfway down its back. Now, from what I could see, from its front shoulders to its hindquarters, probably five and a half feet in length. I mean, it, it, it was pretty long. It was longer than any other type of dog that I've seen. Um, I don't recall a tail. Its chest was fairly large i mean i guess you know i hear these other stories and how they have the 
big, thick barrel chest and shoulders, and then it kind of tapers down to a very a significantly smaller rear end. Yeah, it was like that. And when this thing moved, I didn't see a face yet. I'm like, yeah, this is one of my buddy's friends or something screwing with us in an outfit. And then it moved. And when it moved, it, you could see muscle definition. And again, back end looked like a dog, very muscular. Um, the front end, again, it, it had these, I didn't see hands or claws or anything like that, but it had arms that did not look like a, a dog would. Um, they were bowed out again. They were bowed out. Uh, to give you an example, hit the deck and do a push-up. And when you when you prep for a push-up, how your arms are bowed out, that's how it is. That's how this thing looked. And I'm like, man, what is this thing? And then it started moving behind me. And at that point, I saw a snout. It didn't snarl. I didn't see teeth. But its snout was significantly large. I, I, I can't even describe the size. It was larger than that of like a German Shepherd. But maybe the, the base thickness of like a Rottweiler, but long like a German Shepherd. and. It moved and it was quiet. I mean, not not completely quiet, not completely silent, but it, it was very quiet and calculated in its moves. And I'm watching this thing and I'm all I'm doing is I'm turning my upper half of my body, just watching this thing, keeping an eye on it. And I didn't move anything outside of that. Now, what happened, this thing was coming across me. And it got to a certain point where I couldn't turn anymore. And I'm just barely forcing my eyes to stay on this thing. This thing turned towards me. It didn't have the red eyes or the gold eyes. It had black eyes. I mean, yeah, there was, it was just dark. There was, it was almost like they were non-existent, but you could still see a slight shine from it. Um, didn't see any breath out of it or anything like that. But when this thing turned towards me, it crouched down as uh, like an ambush predator, a, a cat. That would be the way that this thing kind of crouched down. And the look on its face is, yeah, um, we're going to make something of you. And at that point, that was my cue to get the heck out of Dodge. Yeah, that that was that was pretty spooky. That was my first first time outside of the silhouette seeing something that close and in with that much detail uh weight of this thing man muscle size maybe 400 pounds maybe um i don't know i just i didn't ask other than that I, for the rest of the year it kind of stayed quiet i didn't didn't really see anything and then again i didn't really make any huge amounts of effort to go out into the woods, especially after that. And then, you know, uh, oh, the howling, man. But um, didn't really see anything uh, for the most part of the year. Um, next time that uh, I ran across something, same back road, just farther end to east of it, where, you know, it's between... One road and another. This was at the far east end of this. And that was October of 94. I was out with a couple of friends, same guy. And we've heard more stories about these things. And now you're kind of believing these things. You can't deny it. It's it's in your face. We had gone out and further down this park, there's a place where people will run their horses and uh, certain times of the season, they'll take their dogs out for uh, bird training. And um, on the left side of this, this is on the south side of the road, so it'd been the east side, there's a, a swamp. And again, October 94, clear night, full moon, beautiful night. Got it. The whole thing had that glow. And one friend and I, we just stayed in the truck. One buddy decided, hey, I'm going to go check this out. I got a feeling about something. You do you, man. You do you. And um, he 
decided to go down this trail. Now it's a maintained trail. It's, it, it's fairly groomed again. Like I said, they had horses going through it and everything like that. And he had gotten down to the, where the swamp area is. And between the main trail and the swamp is probably 40 feet or so, but it has the tall grass between the trail and the swamp. We're watching him walking down there and everything. He's being all cautious. Then a friend and I, we caught something. It was behind him, but coming out of the swamp. And it was white. I mean, it is either light gray or white. I mean, it was, it almost glowed in the, in the moonlight. And I'm like, what is this thing? And right around that same time, it jumped out. It cleared all of that tall grass and landed behind our buddy. And he turned around. He obviously startled. And he turned around and faced this thing. And we, I, I couldn't see much of it at that point, so I couldn't really tell you a size yet. But what had happened, this thing darted back off in towards the swamp. Buddy come running up to the truck that his dad had. And um, he had a like a Dodge Ram pickup of sort. And he ran up fast as he could. He got up there fairly quick, and we decided to take off. And uh, he peeled out of this park area and he got out onto the side road and i'm looking i'm looking now he's bringing up dust and everything like that but i'm watching from where this where the swamp was at and i'm like hey dude he's what he's you know he's panicked obviously I'm like dude you got to get moving and he's, he's like what what and i said whatever it is that you kicked off down there it's coming for you and i watched this thing run up a trail and as it was going up a hill, there was like a like a guardrail for people where they would park. And this thing cleared it and it shot across that parking lot and out onto that side road. And my buddy, I think he if I have to remember, he was doing maybe 45, 50 at the time. And this thing was gaining on him. This thing was moving. I mean, there's no joke about it. And it was it was long. Like the the one I had mentioned that we saw on a sledding hill, but it was considerably shorter, but it was more stocky, if you will. Um, length of the hair or fur, if you will, I, I I couldn't tell you. I think it was longer, but it wasn't. It wasn't. It definitely wasn't short. This thing was pretty big, and it, it only followed us for a short period of time just a few seconds and then it it darted off back into the woods and that was the extent of it that was it i mean it was done and over it didn't chase us down and and where his house was where he was living at the time he since moved but this road this dirt part of this road you had the two main roads north and south east and west on this this road he was at the west end of, of that road across the street. There's an old fire hall there. So he made quick time of that to get back to the house. After that, again, it was October 94. Uh, something happened to me. It was called life. Now that's where everything just kind of went quiet. Didn't really go out there for quite a few years. I think it was between uh, that time, late 94. I think it was like 98 before I started going back out that way. And I think it was getting into, I think it was 99. Yeah, I think it was summer of 99 is when we started driving around back there and not going to woods, just driving around at night. Our friends and I would do this. We'd just travel back roads and talk and get philosophical and all that. Uh, One of my other buddies and I, we went back there and um, main highway goes through. We turned off of that to go onto this side road. And I had a, um, a, a spotlight, a 2 million candle power spotlight that we just take, you know, just in case we think we see something, we, you know, we can light something up. And that ended up being the case. We had turned on this side road and what had happened was, there's an old dam 
or something. It used to be a mill back in the day or whatever, but you know, it's a, an old remnants of a dam that was there. And by this was fairly tall tree, wasn't crazy huge, maybe 10, 15 feet at tops. Yeah, we'll say 15, trying to put stuff into measurements here. And for some reason, it was just weird. It caught my attention because there was a ton of, uh, what do you call them, lightning bugs or fireflies, whatever, that was kind of swarming around this tree. We're driving, so I'm like, dude, check that out. It's kind of cool, you know. But there were a couple lightning bugs that were significantly larger and didn't flicker on and off. And they really caught my attention. Um, give me a distance, 75 feet between us and this tree. And we see it and we notice it. Like, dude, give me that light. Take that light out, 2 million Canada power, boom, instantly I light this thing up. I don't, I don't know if that would have been Sasquatch, a smaller Sasquatch, or if it was a dog man or a critter, as I call them. But this thing had a lighter brown fur. And I didn't see a face at that point because, you know, you put two million candle power in the face of anything and it's going to flinch. And what this did, this is where I noticed hands and claws because it blocked the light with its right hand. And at that time, I saw the, the fingers and the claws and the arms. If I had to say anything on a height, maybe between six and seven feet, it, it wasn't huge. Uh, even. Um, Shoulder width wasn't crazy. It wasn't muscular. Um, the hair color, like I said, with the brownish color, length of it. A good reference would be checking out uh, back in the 80s, Ozzy Osbourne had done an album called Bark at the Moon, where he had dressed up like a werewolf or whatever. That's what it looked like. I mean, that's that's the only thing that I can say is what it looked like. The hair the length of it, the fingers, the claws, the arms. That's that's what it looked like. It was, uh, at that point, I didn't even go farther at that point. I actually backed out onto the main road, which was probably a couple hundred feet out. I just, I just didn't want to go that way anymore. And um, kind of stayed away. Oh, man, what else had happened? I think we stayed away from that point. But we would drive around. We'd still drive around. You know, we'd get up the curb. We're going to drive around or whatever, you know, future time. And I don't even know what this was. But we had gone back into this park. And at this park, there's an old ranger station, a house or whatever for the state park. And um, it's long been abandoned. And... We were driving around. At this time, I didn't have my light. I didn't have it anymore. It broke or whatever. But there's an old abandoned ranger station. For y'all that may want to reference this, uh, there was a remake of a movie called Red Dawn. It was back in 2012. And during this movie, there's a I, I call it the cabin scene. And if you look it up on YouTube, there's a scene where uh, the bad guys come out with the two guys' fathers, and they're talking to the kids that are hiding in the woods. Yeah, that's the place. And with a lot of this stuff that go went on that I've seen, uh, even stuff I haven't uh, haven't told you yet, a lot of this is in that area, including the sledding hill. The, sled, the sledding hill is is on the northwest corner of that park. But anyway. We just drove around in this old beat up ranger station, had some weird stuff to it. You know, it's all old and creepy. And I, I sent Vic a picture of it earlier. There was windows and part of a wall that was busted outwards. And usually if you're going to break into something, the debris goes in. No, this was from outwards or from the inside out. And it's kind of looking, it was weird. But at that point, we saw a set of eyes in the upper right-hand window. And that was kind of, it, it, it was, 
it wasn't scary. It was a, yeah, I'm here and you see me. And the only thing that we had for light was just the high beams on my buddy's truck. And these eyes, man, I've only seen them a couple of times. They're, they're, they're beautiful. I mean, that's the only way that I can describe it. In fact, I was doing a little research today and the color that I found closest to it. Again, you guys want to get an idea of what I'm looking at for specifics. Look up a sky blue topaz. That was the color of these things. They're just absolutely beautiful. I mean, but you couldn't really make out a silhouette of anything, but you knew something was there because it would blink and then it would kind of move its head and kind of shift a little bit from side to side and kind of duck down a little bit. But it, it didn't do anything. It didn't come out after us. It didn't run away. And at that point, we just left. I mean, it's just one of those things. It's weird. Getting back on it, I can't get over it enough of how these, knock on wood again, how I've never had violent or scary encounters with these things. I just, I, I can't get over it for me. Yeah. Anyway, back into this. Now, winter of 99, we had uh, gone back out in this area. Same buddy I was with on that last detail I gave you, but he also at this time had a female friend from his work. And I had actually picked up a new spotlight at that point. And she was on board with a, a, a lot of these conversations because, you know, it's kind of a weird thing to bring up to people. But, you know, she was on board with it. Now, this girl, I believe that she was, oh, man, I think she was from Arizona. I believe it was Arizona because she had run-ins with skinwalker i think that was a skinwalker there so she had issues with skinwalkers it was how kai had they even mentioned here recently yeah i kind of only want to say their names a very few amount of times and unfortunately i'm not getting the message <laughs> that's just on me other than that again it just it just kind of went silent after that after we had left and that was it. I mean, I didn't really see anything for quite a few years again. And that would bring us to 2004. 2004 had some pretty interesting uh, experiences with that. Yay. Actually saw my first set of tracks. That was kind of cool. Big. But we'll start in July of 94. Personal note, uh, the wife I had at the time, her and I had split up. So a lot of my belongings were in my car, yeah, including a um, a little Mosin the Gaunt rifle, uh, M44, for any of you uh, gun people out there with bayonet. But anyway, summer of 94 rolls around, end of July, actually. And there were a couple issues. I went down again by where that old ranger station was at and on a little road that went further back in the park, they had, it's like a baseball diamond, a softball diamond, whatever. So I know y'all can imagine the size of those. I just drove down there. Something told me to do it. And this was like after work. And I think it was, it was on a Saturday. I only worked until like two 30 in the afternoon. And I went down there and again, keep in mind what I have in the vehicle. I drove down there and Parked in the field of the baseball diamond, there was a DNR officer, or should I say DNR officer vehicle. It was a truck. And this is, it, is, it struck me as weird because it was just there, not in a parking area, in the middle of this baseball field, door wide open and running. I just, I, I don't know of anyone who would just do that. There's no outhouses around or anything like the guy had to go have a break or something like that. There's nothing. And having come from EMS or, you know, police background or whatever, be it friends or family or whatever, you just don't do that. You just don't leave your vehicle wide open running and abandon it. It was strange. And I walked over between it and the infield. And I'm looking around, looking around. And all of a sudden I started hearing stuff. It was running. But you could tell definitely whatever it was, was heavy and on two feet. 
And I heard it in one spot and I heard it in another. It was almost like they were, whatever it was, one would advance the uh, next amount of feet. And then another one advanced an X amount of feet. And this went on for a few minutes. And I don't know. The whole, this whole experience here probably lasted less than 10 minutes. So it was just a couple minutes, a few minutes. And I started getting a little nervy because now I'm getting stuff from in front of me. Can't see it. Not that far away because just beyond the baseball diamonds was wood, swamp, thick brush, whatever. And I'm looking, don't see anything. I, I go back to my car and, oh my God, this is going to be self-incriminating, but it is what it is for my experience. I grabbed that Mosin and I put five rounds in it and one in the pipe. And it was almost like a, uh, almost like a flight or fight, however they say that. But I haven't got that far to the flight part. <laughs> and when I did that, that was a it was a big mistake i didn't get attacked i didn't hear anything i'm sorry I, i'm sorry when I, when I mean here i didn't hear anything i didn't hear growls or howling or anything weird like that i didn't hear any obviously i didn't hear a dnr officer please put your hands up you know nothing like that and i started getting surrounded and it was heavy it was getting closer and I was literally surrounded on 360 degrees. I mean, and how many? I couldn't tell you. I, I don't know. There was enough to surround me. Didn't see anything. Now, one thing that I did experience with that, again, I heard just the footsteps or running or whatever. I felt it. And I don't know what this is. And I, I felt this a couple times. It's It's... I guess I, I've heard stories about it where with Sasquatch or even tigers, they emit some type of frequency that allows it. It does something to its prey to make it go ooh, ooh, and, and make it stop. And it was almost that type of feeling. And at that point, I just I, I said, man, I'm outnumbered here. There's more of these things than I got rounds of ammo. And could I stop them? No, we know it better. But I unloaded the firearm, threw it in the trunk of my car, threw the ammo back in the glove box, and I just left. That was it. That was strange. Again, that was July of 04. And um, then uh, later part of July had an interesting experience. New girl I was seeing, her brothers and some of their friends had rented a cabin that was on the same side road as where the, the ranger station had just a little further down, still the same park, whatever the case was. I was going to go there and visit them that night. They were having a little get together, uh, whatever. And a couple things happened. When I turned onto this off road, uh, what do we call it? Uh, hint, hint, petty bone. I turned on there and I noticed brush moving and it was a lot of brush moving and now it was getting late i don't, I don't think it was quite 10 o'clock yet but it was getting kind of late i don't recall it i think there was a moon out i don't remember if it's full moon or whatever but either way i'm driving down this road and along the embankment just a few feet into the tree line on occasion i would either see something very tall and running now that had dog feet i'm sorry dog legs if you will and human type arms and the large canine head with the long snout and the big ears and on occasion i would see some running just on all fours if anyone wasn't wiser they would just say it was like a large wolf maybe something like a large timber wolf something that had a little more oomph to it fairly long again i I just don't recall ever seeing tails on any of those ones. But anyway, half mile, three quarter mile down the road, I finally get to this part. And just before that, this entrance driveway, if you will, these things just kind of darted off into the woods. They are on my right side, southwest side of the road. And 
before I got there, they just kind of darted off, disappeared. I'm like, what in the world? That was just strange. I'm going to have fun explaining this one to the people at this park, this cabin, I'm sorry. And the girl I was seeing and one of her younger brothers, she had two of them. I think he was maybe 14, 15 at the time. And I got out of the car. And he's like, oh, yeah, I knew you were coming. I'm like, dude, how do you know I was coming? I didn't tell anybody but your sister. He's like, yeah, but they came. They were waiting. It, it, he said something on that line. It was just, and I'm like, what are you talking about they? And he started pointing. Now he's pointing to the wood line of where I just came from. And man, Vic, I tell you, it was crazy. There was probably at least 10 of these things. There had to have been. I mean, because again, it was one of those things where he got surrounded. And the two brothers, you know, they're just like, yeah, we know. We've seen them before. And the younger brother is very spiritual. He He's one of those people that could tell you what's going to happen to you when he was a child he would tell you things that were going to happen to you and they would end up coming into fruition. But anyway, back to this. It, it, it was weird. Again, it wasn't scary. There's nothing intimidating about this. We'll say yet, but they're all different sizes. You're typical. You're six to seven feet, maybe a couple of them. A couple of them were pretty hefty in size, pretty tall. From what I could tell, again, I'm dealing with silhouettes here. So colors, are out of the question at this point because they're just in the wood line just out of the reach of the campfire and the light on the uh, cabin and i'm watching these things and we're watching and we're like are these guys acting like idiots it, what's wrong with them i mean it was one of those things again you, you talk about a dog man you're thinking something that's gonna have a purpose in the way that it moves but it was weird the, the only way that i can kind of describe it as sit out in an early fall day or late fall day, whatever, and watch the squirrels chasing each other and acting the fool. That's what these things were doing. It, it was really strange. It was, you'd see one and it would be standing behind a tree. And obviously it's larger than a, a tree. Again, this is more like pine tree areas. Again, where the, the branches don't start until, you know, above your head. It's like, what, what are you trying to hide behind? It's ridiculous. And some would run on all fours and disappear, and then they would come back. But they, for the most part, they surrounded us, and they just watched. On occasion, you would catch a glowing eye, usually white, that, like that bright white that I was telling you about from earlier. And, man, it was they didn't do much of anything. They just ran around acting the fool i mean they would check us out and stuff and it one that was interesting it was one of the bigger ones it was going from tree to tree and i don't remember exactly how far it was if i had to guess i'm going to say probably 20 feet and i'm watching this thing and imagine a dog man six seven feet in height try to tiptoe from tree to tree and this is what this blasted thing did i'm like what in the world and then a couple of them, like I said, they would just run on all fours and just disappear. And then one came close. This sounds like a great spot to stop tonight's show, but don't forget to come back Monday night and catch part two. But having said that, before we get out of here, if you've had a dog meal encounter of your own and would like to be a guest on the show or just talk with me in private about it, please go to dogmealencounters.com and let me know. Thanks again so much for listening and have a great night.